The Book of Daniel, Chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our continences be looked upon before thee, and the continence of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And, as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat, and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel chapter 1. The book opens with a captivity which is a fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah chapter 25 from verse 8 to 11 as you have in Emmanuel, you're going to see that is where he had prophesied that the people were supposed to leave the land to rest. And because they had failed to leave the land to rest every six years and the seventh year, what actually happened is that God is going to move them out of their land so that the land would be able to, to rest. So Judah committed to sin. And when we come here, Judah, we're talking about the southern tribe of the nation of Israel that resulted in the 70 years of captivity. Firstly, disobedience to God's word as recorded in the book of Jeremiah chapter 34. The people were to, lay, to let the land rest every seven years. But they failed to allow this for 490 years. So their captivity is going to run from 606 BC to 536 BC. Now remember BC, the higher number means that you're further away in time. The lower number means that you're getting close to our time. Secondly was the departure from the worship to God. Israel followed after other gods and the Lord sent them into a country which was the heart of idol worship. Now when you track in your Bible, prior to this Babylonian captivity, when they are taken away from their homeland, 
Every time a nation or Israel encounter a nation, they will go and bow down to these images and these gods that they have. <laughs> no God in agree. He take them and he put them in the center of every kind of thing they could look at and ram it in the throat for 70 years. And let me tell you, when they left Babylon after that 70 years, never again the children of Israel bow down to anything. God wiped it out of their appetite once and for all. Anybody who claimed to speak in the name of God or claim to be anything that is God, they will actually stone them, they sword them, uh, uh, stun them, they throw them in pit, even when God come, they kill you too. That was the guy of passion they had because of what happened here. Alright? So sometimes when you hear, we don't want to hear. God could take you a place where when you learn your lesson, it takes 70 years to learn the lesson. Why did they overload it? <laughs> it is important to note that it was the Lord who gave Joachim, which was the last king in Israel, into Nebuchadnezzar's hand. God is sovereign, and he is the one that puts people in power. Despite their captivity, God was in control. So, I always tell people this. God could use the pot, and God could use the coal. Paul, let me see who we knew for a fact, and God knew for a fact, this was an idol worshiper, a cold heart, cold hearted, ruthless ruler. It was cold. God could use it. And God didn't use it. It's the lukewarm, is the one God has got to use. I tell people if you're a Christian, be a Christian. If you're a sinner, be a sinner. Be a, be a, be a bad, good sinner. <laughs> but you can't be in between. All right? So God can still be able to utilize. And that's exactly what I, And at the end of the day, when God uses man and touches life in chapter 4, you will see he actually got saved. And he recognized that there is a God in heaven. Now, in verses 3 and 4, so we introduce here basically to uh, not only did they come, uh, so we find this your king is the king. Jeez, what does that mean? Praise the name of the Lord. Give me one second. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right, so we find that the king here is the one that is taken. And not only that too as well, he takes all of the vessels and carry it into the land of China. And that's the same word for Babel or Babylon um, too as well. In verses 3 and 4, we see evidence too as well that he focused on teenagers that were from a royal lineage. Yet they had physical health and were very good looking. Yet they had the heart for living. So you can be good looking and, and so forth. You can be good looking and so forth. Alright? They had abilities that was unique. In the sense that they were they had no blemish, so they used use a lot of face cream. <laughs> Teenagers of outstanding ability, physically strong, that means therefore that they were fit. They were well favored in terms of they were pleasing in appearance, young and they were very athletic at the same point in time too as well. Skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understand science. This morning we talk about that. They were they had mental keenness, quick thinkers. In other words, then the children of um, the children of of these individuals, they had beauty coupled with brain. Beauty coupled with brain. All right. Now, possible reason why they were selected. Those persons carrying the captivity would serve as hostage. To keep the royal family in line. So you find here that he most likely will have left these individuals um, in the court of Nebuchadnezzar so that the Jewish people will remain in check because they know that the royal family was there. The presence in the king court will serve as a reminder to Nebuchadnezzar of his conquest and success in battle. Careful training and preparation in the Babylonian University might assist in the administration 
of the Jewish people. So you will see also too as well that you will teach them the laws of the Chaldeans, the laws of the Chaldeans for a period of about three years. All right, you will actually teach them. Now, we move into an element where you have to transform or conform. Four youths are mentioned and four names are given who are called to stand up against the odds in a changing society. Maybe the corrupting influence of the Babylonianish culture had sucked the other Jewish captives and they were no longer useful in God's hands. These four individuals faced three crises. There was an authority crisis, there was a morality crisis, and then there was an identity crisis. All right? Three critical things. They were to enroll in the Babylonian University where they now had to be trained in the things of Babylon. They had to learn what was actually taking place and what was actually happening in this particular scenario that is going on. All right? So very important in terms of understanding. Now, apart from the um, apart from what is indicated in terms of the the link that is made in the authority crisis, where they were placed in the three role or the three year role of, of, of engagement, is that there was brainwashing the youths. They were now exposed to the different theories of academics, philosophy, evolutionary positions, astrology astronomy all of these things were taught and directed to these individuals who were there so they now had the opportunity where they were to examine the difference between the word and the world are you know me? between the word and the world so very important in terms of what was taking place is exactly what even happened with a lot of our youths today too as well because what will actually take place is that we have individuals that are bombarded by the things of the world. Secondly, there was a morality crisis. A plan was set in place that they will now have a change in their taste. Different food was actually given, so there was a change in food to cultivate a new appetite for the best that the world can offer. It was to stir a craving for God instead of gold, material instead of spiritual, Pleasure on earth instead of heaven. And then the last thing that they had an encounter with is an identity crisis. Their names were connected to their devotion to God. Their name change is a good example of brainwashing. And let me tell you this. Even today, there are different religious systems that are set up where when you join them, the first thing they do is change your name. There is name change, followed by food change, followed by dress code or clothing that is also changed too as well. So you even have that also taking place in terms of identifying what is actually happening and what is actually taking place. All right? So very important. Their name was changed. So the four young men, their names were changed. Uh, Daniel, which name means God is my judge was now changed to Belshazzar, which means Bel will protect. Hananias, which means God is gracious. He ended up getting one of my name, which is inspiration of the sun. All right? Michelle, which means God is without equal, was now changed to Meshach, which means belonging to Ahu. And uh, uh, Azariah, which means the Lord is my helper, was now changed to Abednego, which is Sylvan to Nebo. Are you there with me? We find that Daniel has a decision to make with regards to food. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Daniel purposed in his heart to go the way of abstinence in the midst of cultural pressure, peer pressure, and fear pressure. Cultural pressure because it was Babylon's way versus the Lord's way. 
peer pressure because at the beginning you'll actually see that Daniel alone here stands up. And I'll tell you something, sometimes when you alone have to stand up, you will find that when you stand up alone, other people come and stand with you too as well. Alright? And then finally, fear pressure to obey, sorry, to disobey the king's orders was that. Daniel's decision in verse 8 resulted in others standing with him in verse 10. So we find that Daniel purpose in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat. And then we will see later down here in verses 10 that we know our friend. Well, so then you might be on a job and you feel it's you alone that's standing up. And when you stand up, you realize that others that are also able to stand with you too as well. Daniel was wise, yet humble, as he made his request to the eunuch with a gracious attitude, thus opening the door for opportunity to request food that was not offered to idols. The issue was not the food, but rather identification, and favor is granted in humility. So when he made the request to the head of the eunuch, he did not do it with the wrong attitude. Yeah, sometimes you're on the job and they ask you to do something. And you can't go out and tell them, I have to share that. It's the approach. He approached in humility that resulted in favor. The eunuch was concerned about his own reputation and how Daniel's appearance would be if he failed to eat. Well, obviously. And Daniel put forward the proposal of being able to prove um, him for 10 days so that he doesn't endanger himself but also doesn't endanger people that you are under authority to. You know, sometimes you want to do something in certain environments and so on and you don't just consider yourself, you have to remember that you are under authority. And Daniel recognized that he's not only endangering, he can endanger himself, but he can endanger the people responsible for him. So he takes that into consideration. When he's told here about what he chose to eat, it is seeds, vegetables, wheat, barley, peas, beans, lentil, and so on like that. Who we serve will be seen on our face. Examine the face of the people who serve God or the devil. God will honor them that honors him. Are you there with me? Alright? So here we find that he makes a request and he indicated what is taking place. From verse 17, God honored these youth's decision that resulted in the following. Number one, they received spiritual revelation. They had discernment to know truth from error. Their learning increased and they acquired facts and the ability to use those facts. They were ten times, maybe that is, maybe because they possibly didn't eat the food for ten days. They are not ten times wiser. But they were ten times more wiser than all of the other individuals. So all of the other wise men that existed that ruled the world. Now you have to remember here that Nebuchadnezzar is ruling the entire world. So these people in front of him, the advice that they are given, you can't come up with any and anything hatching from the back of your head, you pull from your pocket. You better know beyond a shadow of a doubt what you were. So in all manner of wisdom and understanding and the king acquired from them, he found them to be ten times better than the world. On the job, in your workplace, in the schools, we should be able to not only have the wisdom of the world, but we must also have the wisdom of God as well. And because we have the coupled knowledge of birth, of both of them, sorry, we should be wiser than anybody else on the outside. Anybody else. All right? So that's the first thing. Secondly, because of that, we find that they got royal elevation. They were promoted and given official position in the imperial government as they stood before the king. Hey, teenagers could get into parliament. Well, you're quiet. Right, I'll tell the next one. Teenagers could get into parliament. These individuals, because of their brilliance, 
and willing to stand for God in the political world becomes advisors to the king. Mind you, they are slaves and foreigners from a foreign land. Alright? From a foreign land. Note the use of their Jewish name. So you'll notice here in verse 19, um, when the king communes with them, the, the, the scripture does not use the Gentile name, but it reverts back to their Jewish name. Because they honor God, God honors them with their original Hebraic name, showing their Hebraic connections. Are you there with me? All right? If you stand for God, God will stand and defend you. And then there is personal continuity. One of the things that we have today with leadership and the leadership crisis in our world is that we have a lot of people who make a lot of statements and promises and rise to power, but they cannot continue. They rise up and they fall down. All right? We find also to as well, there is personal continuity. Once again, there is evidence in his heart he didn't just attain, but he also maintained his character and standard and was that was set before him. He not only rise up, but he also what? Stayed up as well. Like I said, he survived under four political leaders and parties. Daniel lived through the Babylonian Empire up to Cyprus, which was the king, first king of Persia. So he went through the entire Babylonian system and all of the political leaders that they had. And even when that uh, empire uh, fell apart and was conquered by the Medes and Persians, he also ended up there as well. He survived the attack of Satan through political, from the, from, through politics, sorry, from the opposition leader and his cabinet. Remember when they made prayer illegal and they wanted to uh, train the lions then and so on. Cyrus was king, was the king who signed a decree that liberated the Jews from bondage and uh, allowing them to return to the promised land. It is possible, and the history actually has some evidence of this, that Daniel was the one that drafted the, 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 the particular decree. So God will choose, choose this very same man that becomes the document that Nebuchadnezzar will go back to Jerusalem with to rebuild the world. So he's a teenager when he lives when he leaves Jerusalem. He survives in Babylon and most likely you will have seen the full 70 years. He's now in his 90s when people are going back after the 70 years have passed. And he most likely is the individual that pens the document that will rebuild the walls by Ezra, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, and so on like that. Which will be the same temple that the Messiah is going to walk into. 